Hey guys, welcome back to the Motorcycle Travel Channel. I'm Sterling, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the DJI Osmo Action 4 action camera, and I'm gonna compare this camera to the newest GoPro camera, the Hero 12. Let's see how these cameras stack up against each other and which one I think works better for motorcycle travel vlogging. That's what's going on in this video. Stick around. I've always used GoPro cameras in the past since about 2010, and they've worked pretty well over the years. In fact, they've kind of been my standard for a, a action camera for motorcycle travel vlogging. But I started to experience a lot of issues that I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with, where they would freeze, they would lock up, and I would have to remove the camera from the case, take the battery out, put it all back together before the camera would work again. And I got so fed up with this that I decided to look for an alternative. That's what led me to my first DJI Osmo action camera. It was the Action 3. I purchased that camera with my own money. I started making content with it. And so DJI saw those videos and they reached out to me and wanted to sponsor some videos. So they sent me an Osmo Action 4, which I've been using for a little over a year now. Well, now DJI reached out to me again and they wanted me to do a comparison video. That's what I'm going to do in this video. So let's just start out with the price of these two cameras. Right now, you can pick up a DJI Osmo Action 4 for $299 and a GoPro will set you back about $349. So the DJI Action comes in just a little bit lower than the GoPro but I wouldn't purchase either of those cameras by themselves. What I purchased was the DJI Adventure Combo. That's this package right here. Comes with a bunch of extra things that I find very useful, like their three battery charger, their really high quality selfie stick, magnetic mounts, various other mounts and cables, those kinds of things. The DJI Adventure Combo, that comes in at $399. And on the GoPro side of things, I got the Creator Kit. Comes with the GoPro Enduro battery. It comes with the Volta rechargeable battery hand grip. A really nice case and some other things. Right out of the box, I like the way that both of these cameras feel in my hands. They both feel high quality, rugged, and are similar in their overall appearance and layout and configuration of buttons, etc. On paper, the DJI camera is just a little bit smaller and lighter than the GoPro. Here's what it looks like and sounds like when you start up and record with both of these cameras. First, the DJI. And now the GoPro. Both of these cameras have the one touch record feature, which means that you can simply press the record button and that powers the camera on and starts recording. I'm gonna press the button and you'll see how quickly it starts recording. Three, two, one, go. Just like that, it only took about one second. Three, two, one, go. And there we go. So it definitely took quite a bit longer on the GoPro. I would say probably three seconds compared to less than a second on the DJI Osmo Action 4. Hands down, one of my favorite features of the DJI camera has got to be the magnetic mounting system. The DJI magnetic mount is extremely simple and easy to use and very robust. The magnets are very strong and there are a couple of additional safety clips that hold your camera in place. And I've never had a camera fall off or become unattached in the year that I've been using this system so far. After using the DJI magnetic mount, I find the old fashioned GoPro mount to be very cumbersome to use. It requires lining up the pin and a lot of screwing and unscrewing of the camera, which takes more time in the field. The DJI magnetic mount is one of my favorite features of this camera, and it's something I couldn't imagine living without once I've used it. When it comes to the touch screens on these cameras, both of them are very clear, high resolution, responsive. They work very well. I like the menu layout and configuration on both of these. I think the GoPro menu has been improved quite a bit, 
but I still don't like it quite as much as the DJI Osmo Action 4. I think that that menu is just a little bit easier to read and better organized in my opinion, though of course that might be a personal preference. But again, both of the screens are color, they're very high resolution and very responsive to my touch. I like them both quite a bit. One thing to point out is that they do both have a front LCD screen as well, which is useful for framing shots or composing, especially when I have the camera pointed at myself. The DJI camera, however, is a touch screen. So that's something that you can't do on the GoPro camera. I don't use this as much as I thought that I would, but when I want to use it, it is incredibly useful to have this feature. The DJI Osmo Action 4 has a lens aperture of f2.8 and the GoPro has a lens aperture of f2.5. Of course, a smaller aperture means a wider opening so more light can come onto the sensor. However, DJI has a trick up its sleeve which we'll talk about later and that is a larger sensor than the GoPro. And while we are on the subject of lenses, let's talk about what happens when you scratch or damage a lens on these cameras because it does happen. Here's an example of my GoPro Hero 8. Unfortunately, there is no lens protector on the Hero 8. That lens was damaged and I just had to live with it or get a new camera. What I like about both of these new action cameras is that they do have removable lens protectors. The DJI uses a screw on, screw off type of lens protector. And the GoPro has a twist on and twist off lens protector. Both of these cameras are waterproof as long as all of the doors and ports are closed up. Now I don't really use the waterproof functionality of these cameras in any extreme way, but I do find it to be very useful when I'm riding my motorcycle in the rain or when I'm filming a motorcycle going through something like a river crossing. Quite often I'll get the action camera right up there in the action and it certainly gets wet, covered by water when I'm filming these kinds of things. So I do like the assurance that both of these cameras are waterproof. The DJI goes down to a depth of 18 meters and the GoPro goes down to 10 meters. So let's talk a little bit about field of view, and that is how you can change the lens settings in these cameras to go from a narrow field of view to a slightly wider field of view, all the way up to something like a super wide or ultra wide field of view. The DJI has three basic lens settings in their camera. The standard lens, which is equivalent to a 24 millimeter lens. The wide angle lens, which is equivalent to a 10 millimeter lens and the ultra wide lens, which is equivalent to a nine millimeter lens. The GoPro has four lens options, linear, wide, super view, and hyper view. Now in the past, DJI had the widest lens available for all action cameras at about 155 degrees. And from what I can gather, the base GoPro lens was right around 148 degrees. However, GoPro now has a new max lens attachment that will bring their wide angle lens up to 177 degrees. So if you wanna buy an additional piece of equipment, the GoPro will go up to 177 degrees. What I can say about using these lenses in practice is that the narrower the lens, i.e. the linear lens, the less distortion or fisheye effect that you are gonna get. Of course, you're not gonna see as much of the environment around you, but what you do see will be less distorted. When you go to the other extreme, to the wider angle lens, you will start to see some distortion in objects, particularly when they are very close to the camera. But that wide angle lens will also give you a field of view when you're traveling down the road on your motorcycle where you can see more of the motorcycle, the handlebars, the front of the bike, etc. So if that's what you want to see, go for the really wide angle lens. If you want to see something that looks a little bit more realistic, go for the linear style lens. Let's talk a little bit about stabilization because both of these cameras excel 
in their ability to create really high quality stabilized footage. And as somebody who has been filming my motorcycle rides for over 20 years now, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to finally be able to have small high quality cameras like these that you can mount on a motorcycle or on your helmet and get stabilized footage. In the past that was never possible. Anytime I would try to mount a camera on a motorcycle the footage would just come back unusable because of the vibrations of the motorcycle, not to mention the vibrations of rocks and ruts and roots when you're going off-road. So both of these cameras create fantastic stabilized footage. The DJI uses a system called Rocksteady and the GoPro calls theirs Hypersmooth. The DJI has two modes of stabilization, Rocksteady and Rocksteady Plus. The GoPro has Hypersmooth and Auto Boost. One thing to note about stabilization is that each mode of stabilization will crop your frame slightly. Of course, this is to be expected as stabilization software typically crops your footage so that the gyroscope can function. And again, the stabilization that comes out of both of these cameras is phenomenal, light years beyond what I ever hoped for as a moto vlogger a decade ago. What stabilization modes are available in these cameras usually depends on other settings like aspect ratio, resolution, frame rate, etc. It should be noted that stabilization really works the best when it's bright and you're outside. Anytime you start recording in low light situations, stabilization will be reduced greatly. This is the same for both cameras and it's not really a big issue to me because I generally don't ride at night or try to film riding at night. So I use these cameras 99% of the time during the middle of the day when it's usually bright and sunny or perhaps overcast, but not during sundown or evening or especially in the middle of the night. The stabilization just does not work nearly as well in those situations. That's the same for both cameras. Another feature associated with stabilization is horizon leveling. Both of these cameras have some form of horizon leveling and horizon lock. DJI calls these settings Horizon Steady and Horizon Balance. GoPro calls these settings Horizon Leveling and Horizon Lock. I find Horizon Leveling to be really useful. If, for example, my camera is incorrectly mounted on my helmet, it's a little bit crooked, or it's mounted a little bit crooked on my motorcycle, Horizon Leveling will come in and take a shot that goes from this to something that looks like this. The software inside of the camera will automatically correct and level the horizon, therefore making up for my mistake of incorrectly mounting the camera. And this is something that in the past has ruined a lot of shots for me because there would be times where I've put my camera on my helmet, it wasn't straight, it was crooked, and I ended up with footage that I couldn't use. So horizon leveling is something I really like. Another example of horizon leveling can be seen here where the motorcycle is going around a corner. Notice how the horizon stays level while the bike is leaning over. Without horizon leveling, the shot would look like this, where the motorcycle stays in place, but the horizon moves. It's your preference, which you prefer, but you have a choice, and I generally prefer to keep my horizon leveling turned on. Horizon lock takes horizon leveling to the extreme and keeps the horizon level even if the camera is rotated a full 360 degrees. As a motorcyclist, I don't find this as useful because there aren't that many situations where my camera would be completely upside down. And if it were, I probably have bigger problems. Let's talk about batteries because that is another really important consideration when it comes to using and filming with your action cameras. When I'm on the road, motovlogging, it's usually a fast paced, busy, hectic environment. And the last thing that I wanna do is deal with a dead battery and not be able to record the footage that I wanna record. So batteries and battery life, charging, are all very important in my opinion. Action camera batteries have come such a long way over the years, you can expect a lot better performance out of today's batteries. The DJI Osmo Action 4 battery is rated to shoot for 160 minutes at 1080p. The GoPro is rated to 155 minutes at 1080p, so they're pretty comparable. You should expect less runtime if you up that resolution to 4K. One of the things that I like the most about the DJI batteries is that they support fast charging. They can be charged up to 80% in only 18 minutes. 
The GoPro says that their dual battery charger optimizes charging so that you'll get a fully charged battery as quickly as possible. I really like the DJI multifunctional battery case. I can store three batteries inside of this case and the red, green, and yellow lights on the outside will light up and indicate the charge status of each battery and it also functions as a power bank. I'm out here on a hot day in the desert, 106 degrees, testing out the new DJI Osmo Action 4. I've used my Osmo Action camera in some pretty extreme temperatures down here in the desert and I have yet to see it malfunction or overheat. I haven't had a chance to use the GoPro in these conditions yet, but here are the specs for the operating temperature of both of these cameras. And when it comes to still photography with these cameras, I don't really use them to take still photos. I exclusively use them for video, but here's the still photo specs for both of these cameras. What I do find extremely important are the video modes and quality settings in these cameras. My main requirement for an action camera is that it can shoot in 4K resolution up to 120 frames per second. And I would also like the ability to shoot in a flat color profile or a log profile as well, in case I wanted to do some more sophisticated color grading. Each of these cameras can do that. The DJI can shoot 1080p, 2.7K, and 4K in aspect ratios of 16 by 9 and 4 by 3, up to a frame rate of 120 in 4K and 240 in 2.7K. The GoPro can shoot all of this and additionally it can shoot in 5.3K resolution and it has aspect ratios of 9x16 and 8x7. This makes both of these cameras sufficient for my needs with the GoPro having the ultimately highest level of resolution at 5.3K and more aspect ratios available. Still, like I said, the 4K video quality that comes out of the DJI Osmo Action 4 is more than sufficient to meet my needs. And there are a lot of other considerations that I find just as important or even more important than technical image quality. Reliability is one of those factors, for example, and I've mentioned in previous videos the problems I've had with my GoPro cameras malfunctioning or not working in the past. Color profiles. When it comes to color profiles, both of these cameras offer the ability to shoot in a normal color profile or a log color profile. The DJI calls theirs D-Log M and the GoPro calls theirs GP-Log. Both of these color profiles are 10-bit and give you a flat image with the greatest amount of options for color grading in the future. This is what the log profile looks like when you don't do any color grading. It's very flat. And then after a little bit of color grading, you can get it to look like this. Let's talk about HDR. DJI says that videos recorded with the Action 4 already have a high dynamic range, which makes HDR video unnecessary. The GoPro camera has its own separate HDR mode that you can record in. One of the advantages of the DJI Osmo Action 4 is that it has a larger image sensor, which theoretically means that this camera should give you better colors, a more dynamic range, and record better footage in low light. I haven't personally seen that big of a difference between these two cameras yet, but like I said before, I don't usually shoot in very low light conditions as a motorcycle travel vlogger. I'm not riding at night, and therefore I'm not trying to film at night. So it's not really that big of an issue for me. But here's some sample footage recorded in low light environments so that you can judge for yourself. Let's talk about audio. The DJI Osmo Action 4 has three built-in microphones and it's compatible with USB-C mics. Of course, the GoPro has its own built-in microphones, but if you want to attach an external microphone, you're gonna have to purchase the Media Mod, which has a 3.5 millimeter microphone port right here. I like the fact that the DJI allows me to plug a microphone directly into the camera without having to purchase an additional accessory. I don't like that it's a USB-C microphone connection, as many of the microphones I use are not USB-C and therefore require a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter, and compatibility has been an issue. One cable I recommend in particular is the Boya BYK4. 
Both cameras have audio meters that show the level of audio being recorded. I find this to be a useful reassurance that my external microphone is working properly and that the camera recognizes the signal coming in. The DJI Osmo goes one step further in allowing me to adjust the audio gain from negative 20 to plus 30 decibels. And I found this to be critical in getting the best sound from an external microphone that mounts inside of my helmet. I usually set the level to negative 12 when I'm recording audio this way. Both cameras have an associated app that allows you to control the camera, preview clips, or send files to the cloud. In my limited testing, I found that the DJI app seemed to work a little bit better. It recognizes my camera and connects faster, and it seems to be a little bit more reliable overall. One of the times that I find this app to be the most useful is when I have the action camera mounted on my motorcycle in a position where I can't see or access the camera or see the screen on the back of it. So for example, let's say that I have the action camera mounted on the rear of my motorcycle because I'm trying to get some shots of my buddies riding their motorcycles and I want to be able to see what I'm recording so that I can slow down my motorcycle or speed up or adjust the framing. So I'll typically mount my phone on my handlebars and now I can have a real-time preview of what the camera sees from the back of my motorcycle and not only that but I can start and stop the recording while I'm riding my motorcycle. So I do find the app has its usefulness for motorcycle travel vlogging and I've been generally pretty happy with the DJI MIMO app. It connects pretty reliably, pretty quickly and I like that I can see what I'm recording while I'm recording it and start and stop that recording when I'm going down the road. So there you have it. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. If you liked this video and this kind of content, give it a like and subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. I've been using action cameras for about 14 years now and I am amazed by the quality of footage that comes out of both of these little bad boys. It's really unreal. And I would say that whichever camera you purchase, you can't go wrong. I do, however, prefer the DJI Osmo Action for the reasons that I've stated in this video. Number one, first and foremost, is that it has just been a lot more reliable for me as an action camera. I have not had any issues where this camera just decided to freeze up or would not operate in over a year. The GoPro Hero 12, have they solved those issues? I don't know yet. I have to use this camera a bit more before I can say that. But right now, as it stands, I'm going to continue using the DJI Osmo Action 4 as my main action camera. I hope that you guys have found this video useful, and we'll see you down the road. Take care.